What's up, YouTube? So today's October 6, 2015. It's day two, numero dos, of my documentation to the Pendleton platform. So I have a few things in store for you guys today. I'm going to sit you down here in a little bit and go over my training and nutrition leading into the meet because I promised that in the last video, but I wasn't able to fit it in with the length of it. And then also a little bit later, I'm going to be doing some uh, upper body workout stuff, which I won't make this video too much about that, but I will include it in there. I have some bench pressing and some accessory work that I do. Uh, to be honest, who gives a fuck about the bench? It's so boring. It's my feel on it. It's actually a difficult lift, but we won't talk about it. These lanky ass arms don't like the bench. So anyway, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate the love. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. There it is guys, 196.8 pounds this morning. Alright guys, so time to dive into my training overview. Uh, we'll start with the training split. It's a simple lower upper split with a random day on Saturday. Monday is a lower body day with a squat focus. Tuesday is an upper body day with a bench focus. Thursday is lower with deadlift focus. And Friday is upper with bench focus again. Saturday is just my day to catch up on missed bodybuilding volume stuff like arms or back for instance. You can also see after the main movements, I always do what's called an auxiliary lift followed by the accessory work. I explain what both of those are in the next part of the overview. Alright guys, so here is the setup of my training over the next 14 and a half weeks leading into the meet. It looks a little scary at first, but I promise it's actually not that complicated. So before we get started, there are two definitions that I want to explain to you so you can understand the thought process here. The first one is volume. Volume uh, in the scientific world is known as sets times reps times weight, but for the sake of simplicity here, we're, we're going to give the definition of volume the total amount of sets and reps we do. Okay, so volume is the amount of sets and reps someone does in their training program. Intensity is going to be the percentage of a one rep max. So for instance, if I say 80% intensity, that means we are working with a load on the bar that is 80% of your one repetition maximum, meaning the amount of weight you could only do for one rep on that bar if you went all out to complete failure. All right, now that we have the definitions of volume and intensity understood, let's move on to the overview of the training. Every few weeks are what we call a training block, and we have them separated out. I'll explain a little bit more to that in a second, but essentially, Early on in the training, we have a higher amount of volume and a lower amount of intensity, meaning we're doing more total sets and reps earlier on, less intensity, meaning lighter weight, essentially. And then as the weeks progress, the volume drops, at least on the main movements of squat, bench, and deadlift, and the intensity rises. So that's kind of the basic thing to understand about all of this, is as the weeks go on, we go from a higher volume to a lower volume and from a lower intensity to a higher intensity. Now, let's look at each little block individually. Starting with weeks one through three, you can see we have SBD written there. I'm not talking about the knee sleeves, in case you didn't know, that actually stands for squat, bench, and deadlift. Okay, so if you look all the way across these blocks, we have SBD written. And what I wanted to explain here is what I'm doing on those movements since the squat, bench, and deadlift are kind of the meat and potatoes of powerlifting. It's what we're focused on the most. So early on in the weeks, you can see we have a 12, a 10, and an 8. That is the rep schemes I'm using. And I literally, I keep my training pretty simplistic compared to most powerlifters nowadays. I'm just working up to a top set of 12, 10, and 8 weeks 1 through 3. 
So you'll see week one, I will do as much weight as possible for a set of 12. Week two, I'll do as much weight as possible for a set of 10. And week three, I'll do as much weight as possible as for a set of eight. Then moving on to the next group, we kind of start back over. So the volume you can see is a little bit higher and it slowly tapers down. And then the next block, volume goes back up in the beginning, but this time a little bit lower than where it started in weeks one. So you can see week four is at a 10 rep max as compared to week one is at a 12 rep max, meaning I've dropped the volume just a little bit at the start of this block. So now it went 12, 10, 8 the first three weeks. Weeks four through six go 10, 8, 6. And you'll see weeks se uh, seven through nine go 8, 6, and 4. So as the weeks go on, that volume is dropping on the squat bench and deadlift, but the reps are getting lower and we're keeping that intensity going up. Now I also do back offsets after my uh, 12 rep or 10 rep or 8 rep max, whatever it calls for the day, but that's not too important. The main thing to understand here is volumes going down and intensity is rising on those. Now once we get to week 10, we have a taper week. This week here is where I kind of cut back on volume and let my body heal to prepare for the peak week that's coming up, or the peak weeks that are coming up after that. I don't believe in one peak week, I do uh, five total actually. So anyway, week 10 is a taper. You can see for the squat, bench, and deadlift, I have three written here, meaning three reps, and I go just at 80%, which is nowhere near a three rep max. Um, it's a little bit lighter. 80% for most people would be something you could do for a seven rep max. So that's three reps at 80% of a one rep max. So, just to explain again, the squat, bench, and deadlift throughout this routine basically start a lot higher reps, and as the weeks go on, they just drop lower and lower and lower. We're gonna to get to the peak week at the end. That one we're gonna kinda of hide for now with my beautiful face in front of it. So, that's the understanding of the squat, bench, and deadlift. Let's move on to what we call the ox lifts or the auxiliary lifts. So auxiliary lifts, if you don't know, are just essentially variations of the main lifts or exercises that are gonna help improve those main lifts. So for instance, an auxiliary lift for the squat that I might use would be uh, a pause squat. In competition, obviously, we don't wanna pause, but in training, a pause squat might make us more explosive out of the hole, hence why we would use it to help us out on, with the auxiliary lift. So any day that I train a squat, the next movement is going to be an auxiliary lift for the opposing lift. So meaning, if I'm training a squat, I'm gonna do some kind of auxiliary lift for my deadlift that day. If I'm training a deadlift, I'm gonna do some kind of auxiliary lift for my squat. That way I keep the frequency a little bit higher on those movement patterns. As you can see, the auxiliary lifts template is really simple. Uh, week one would be three by six reps, so three sets of six. Week two, we get a little bit more volume, four sets of six. And week three would be five sets of six. And then on the next training block, we just start over at three reps of six, or I mean, sorry, three sets of six reps, but we start with new movements. And it literally just does that all the way until the end of the training. So every new block, we choose a new auxiliary lift we're using, and we just start over with the sets and reps. Now that we've explained the auxiliary lifts, we'll quickly move on to the accessory stuff. It's very simple. As I said before, the accessory lifts are just the fluff or bodybuilding work. And you can see uh, we do eight to 12 sets per body part per week of the accessory lifts. And every new training block, that number increases. So we go from eight to 12, 10 to 14, 12 to 16. So volume's always linear, linearly going up with the accessory stuff. That's not too important to understand. Don't worry about this stuff. Honestly, you could get away with doing that pretty minimally. I just plug in a lot of accessory stuff to keep my body looking more aesthetically pleasing. Something I still care about with my training and it doesn't interfere too much with this stuff up here. Okay, now that we got the main blocks explained, let's move on to this peak week. Just to go over this taper week again because I didn't touch it too much. Basically this week here is just to reduce volume because that's what stresses our body out the most and forces these adaptations. And this week here is designed 
to let those uh, our body kind of compensate for all the training we've been doing. It gives us a break and lets the body recover and get a lot stronger during this week. So this is one of the more important weeks here for us to recover and become stronger. Weeks 11 through 15, this is the fun stuff, guys. Um, this is like the peak week. So essentially what our goal is here is to jack intensity way up. So we're going to start hitting numbers around 95% or higher uh, on some of these weeks, meaning we're really getting heavy on the bar, but we're reducing volume big time. I'll explain all that right now. So as you can see, I no longer have SVD written here because the deadlift is funny. It's a really difficult taxing lift on our body. So we have to train that a little bit differently on the peak weeks. So for the squat and bench, it's very simple. Week 11, I just do one set of 80% on the bar, as, as, as many reps as possible. That's an AMRAP set. So what that basically means is I just load up 80% on the bar of my estimated one rep max, and I just go until failure. The next week, I will do 85%. That would be week 12. The week after that, I do 90% for an AMRAP. And then week 14, I do 95%, but I'm no longer doing AMRAPs because it's so close to the meat. I don't want to stress uh, my body out too much. I just do one set of one. Now this is where we start getting really heavy. And that's what starts getting our body prepared to go perform on that platform. And then you'll see the final week leading up into that meet, I just do openers. What an opener is, is basically on the platform, what you call your openers, your first attempt on the main three lifts, the squat, the bench, and the deadlift. This lift there is there just to basically get you on the board. Uh, it's not supposed to be hard. It's not supposed to be heavy. It's something you could do if you were like hung over and went in to go train. It should be a pretty easy lift. So we do openers for the squat and bench the week leading into the meet. So I usually do these on Monday. And that's just to acclimate my body to a little bit of a heavier weight, but still make sure I'm not fatiguing myself going into that meet. Now the deadlift, we have to train a little bit easier and a little bit differently than squat and bench, as I said. You can see uh, week one of the peak week, which is week 11, we do 85% by two to three reps. Then we do the next week 90% two by two reps, so the volume's going down while intensity's going up. In week three, we really back off on intensity we drop it back down to 75% for three sets of three, which is very light, it's not taxing. And as I said, the deadlift is a really hard lift on the body, so that's why we give ourselves a little break right before competition. And then week 14, two weeks out, we work up to a uh, second attempt, meaning uh, basically what we would do after our openers for that second try on the deadlift. So it goes opener, uh, you get a second attempt and then you get a third attempt, which is usually where you try to put the most weight on the bar uh, for the squat, bench, or deadlift on the platform. So basically in training on week 14, we just work up to a second attempt. And that's just to get us really prepared for some heavy deadlifting, especially me because my concern is the deadlift going into this meet. Uh, and then you could see the final week, I just do 77.5%, basically 75%. For two sets of one, just to keep my body uh, adapted to the movements, making sure I'm not forgetting form, uh, but it's not to tax me. That week of the meet, I basically want to rest going into it. So that is the overview of the training. It's a little bit much to take in, but the simple things to understand here are on the squat bench and deadlift, basically I start with high volume, low intensity, and as the weeks go on, that switches from uh, going to low volume to a higher intensity. The auxiliary lifts, I basically just increase volume throughout the training blocks and then start a new movement and increase volume again every training block. The accessory work, who really cares about that? It's freaking bicep curls. It's not going to tax you. Yeah, I increased volume over there, but don't worry about this shit too much. Focus on this right here. That is the meat and potatoes. So I hope that explains my training, guys. I hope that wasn't too long for you. Uh, I'm sure you're tired of looking at my face and this whiteboard, so I'll let you guys go. Thank you so much for watching.